Hi guys, I'm Shmi and I'm currently driving in my brand new Ford Focus RS. You might have seen yesterday, I have just picked this car up. In fact, right now, it's got 13 miles on the clock. It had seven when I bought it, so I'm literally six miles away from the dealer at the moment. But I wanted to talk a little bit about the subject of the title, which is why a collection and not a hypercar? Why am I buying various different cars and not just sort of selling everything and buying one hypercar, which is what everybody asks me. Why don't I save up for a McLaren P1? One of those kind of things. So I'm gonna get onto that as my main sort of topic of today, a bit of a driving video, uh, talking video, a bit like Mr. Solomon Drin would do himself, I suppose. Let's talk about cars, yo, because that is what I'm doing right now um, as I make my way back down south. So I've got about a four, four and a half hour drive ahead of me today because I'm heading to the airport to fly to meet with my parents for my mum's birthday. So I figured I'd shoot an extra bit of content and cover one of these topics that I get asked about an awful lot of times. So as you know, at the moment, I now have the Mini Classic, the Focus RS, the Porsche Cayman GT4, the Ferrari FF, and in hopefully the next week or two, I'll be collecting the McLaren 675 LT Spider. I say hopefully because I don't entirely know when it's coming, but I will definitely be sharing it with you as soon as I get that car. So everybody sort of says, why don't you sell everything and buy a P1? Um, and the first thing I'm just going to respond to that with is clearly the financial side. Unfortunately for me, the McLaren P1, which cost £866,000 when it came out new two years ago, now costs the best part of £1.6 to £1.7 million. Pounds. So it's doubled its value, uh, which is of course fantastic for the lucky 375 people who managed to get one brand new. But it does mean for me that even if I were to sell all of my cars, even the LT Spider and GT4 with small increases, the FF, with a decrease, I would still be, I don't even think, halfway there. So I've announced also that I've ordered the Aston Martin Vantage GT8 and the Mercedes AMG GTR, and I've also applied for the Ford GT. Now I do not intend to have all eight of these cars at the same time, just to, to clarify that. Um, it's a little bit extreme, um, and there would be next to no opportunity to literally drive everything. Um, but I am enjoying trying out different brands, and. Although perhaps the whole lot, for example, I could sell in exchange for one P1, there are a lot more costs to that game that I'll get onto. Um, so like I said, the main thing for me and what I'm really enjoying is you know, having all these cars from different companies, the Rover Mini, the Porsche, the Ferrari, the McLaren, now a Ford, soon an Aston Martin, a Mercedes, and I'm sure I'll try other brands as well, but it's a very interesting one, certainly from a being, I guess, unbiased point of view, to try what these companies are like when you actually first-hand buy a car for them. They all have completely different systems and processes. For example, Aston Martin, the GT8 is a VIP program car, so it's exceptionally bespoke per sort of service, direct phone conversations with everyone. They are fantastic at looking after everything. McLaren, super, super engineering, technology front. What it's like sort of being part of a new company breaking into that sort of market. Then coming to pick up the Ford Focus RS, and dare I say, something a little bit more normal, if I can call it normal, even though there are 18,000 limited run. It's still quite exciting to go to the Ford dealership and see what that side of it is like as, as it changes, because it's, it's quite a long time since I bought a car of this sort of class, well, five or six years. So it's a, a learning kind of experience, an experimental kind of experience. Um, hopefully you guys enjoy seeing the different brands. Obviously there are people out there I know who follow different companies. I certainly saw that when I dropped the Ferrari bomb on you with the collecting my first Ferrari. A lot of people were really pleased to see me break away from the McLaren mold. So I want to keep sort of playing this, trying different companies, seeing what I like. Um, why not, hey? Um, it's sort of cars are what I love. I want to grow cars. So that's why I'm sort of accruing this collection of cars, having multiple different ones in the garage at once. Um, I've seen sort of applica applica sorry, accusations of just doing it to flip cars, but some of these cars go down, you know, this car's gonna go down, um, the FF's going down, the Mini will stay the same, um, the AMG GTR, that's not even a limited edition, I don't think that's going to hold its value. Um, obviously there are some special editions, but they're all cars that I'm interested in for whatever reason. And being a bit of a sort of hoarder, collector of all sorts of different things, cars being my number one passion are the ones that I want to collect. I mean, how cool is it to go down to the garage and just have a choice of cars to drive? I mean, yeah, it might be you know a little bit show-offy in a way, but 
it's my personal love and I get quite a lot of enjoyment sharing it with you guys. I know a lot of you enjoy watching it. So the collection is quite a fun thing to be sort of able to experience these different things and show you what they're like and use different cars for different adventures. Um, and that's leading me actually onto another one, which is the mileage I do. I think I'm driving roughly 50, 55,000 miles a year at the moment between all of my trips. Um, and obviously that includes press cars, dealer cars, other friends' cars, various different things. But even in my own cars, I'm currently doing around 25,000 miles a year. Now, loads of people obviously do that in a, a diesel BMW uh, 5 Series or something. That's completely normal. But the problem, relative problem, is that if you're driving a Ferrari, a McLaren, a Porsche, and you do 25,000 divided by three, um, you know, you're literally talking 8,000 miles a car, roughly. And that's quite a lot for one year in those kind of cars. Um, it genuinely has an impact in value, and also it takes away from some of the excitement and the event of actually driving them if you drive them all the time. So cars are more exciting, or special cars are more exciting, the less frequently you drive them. Slightly unusual logic. Now I'm not for a second saying I'm not gonna drive a car. Every car I ever buy, I will take on trips, adventures, events, track days, all sorts of that kind of stuff, because I will never buy a car to not use it properly. That does not fit in my agenda, even remotely. So it's um, a pretty like fun game, fun thing to have, have the choice and be able to take different cars for different places and the different ones that are more appropriate. You know, like driving around the Isle of Man and the Anglesey Circuit, the GT4 was perfect for that. Sitting on the motorway from London to Monaco, the FF was perfect for that. If I did an Autobahn sort of Germany blitz, I'd love to take the AMG GTR for that. That's why I've sort of acquired one of those. For really special occasions, it's going to be all about the 675 LT. Tootling around London, the Mini. This car driving around potentially snowy highlands in Scotland while still having a smile on your face. It ticks a box, doesn't it? So different cars fit different sort of purposes, niches, and experience. And I'm going to roll on now to the hypercar question itself, and why not one big daddy in the collection, one big hypercar? And the number one is the cost. So like I said, I'd have to sell all of my cars, and that would still leave me short of money, so I'd have to finance something, and that would leave me making massive repayments, um, which I'm obviously not too keen on. Um, but also the running costs. So they're all pretty much the same, but let's talk about the P1 because it's the car I know probably the most about. If you need a new set of brakes in a McLaren P1, 15,000. If you need a new windscreen in a McLaren P1, again, about 15,000. So any individual cost is a lot more than the sum of different cars. Insurance, I, I don't even know. I'm in my late 20s, so my insurance on a car like that it would make the other cars, which are already quite expensive, although it could be worse, so I uh, have quite a decent record, but it, it's, it's going to be a big number. I, I would guess for me on a P1 I'd be talking 30k, 40k pounds, um, which is a lot more than we pay for the sum of other cars. So the cost side of it alone, and the worry if anything happened, if you scratch, damage, scrape something, it is so bespoke. It has to go somewhere, it could be off the road for ages. Um, you just live in fear of it. And I know people, some people who do own cars like that, you know, who have, have stretched their, perhaps, to buy it or it's the pinnacle of their collection, who do generally, you know, you do get a little bit uncomfortable by it. Great to drive every now and then, great as a collectible asset. Um, but for me right now, the time is just not right. Um, down the line, when perhaps there might be a time, we'll see, dream of a, of a world where I may be able to acquire a hypercar and keep some other cars alongside it so I can treat it as something really, really, really special. But you just can't use a car of that kind of value every day. A door dink to a custom sort of special carbon fibre door panel, I, I, it would just crack. I, I, I don't... Yeah, let's not go there. It just would be a very unpleasant world. So for me, I'm having a lot more fun with the supercar collection uh, than going down the hypercar route. Um, it just seems to sort of tick every single box and like I said the reason for the classic Mini and now the Focus RS is just to try out more cars and there are certainly other cars I'm interested in experiencing as well and you know sometimes you can't just grab a press car and do whatever it takes planning and things whereas um, it's, it's potentially possible uh, to go and buy one. Best example of that going back to Solomon Drin whose video format I'm copying for this video. Um, he bought a McLaren 675LT to go and shoot his um, comparison video head to head with a bunch of other equivalent hardcore focused cars. 
and that's a kind of a, a sort of a way to do it, I suppose you could see it. Um, I enjoy driving. I spent my whole life doing car stuff, of course. Well, bar the business stuff behind the scenes. Um, but if it's what all of my life is about, it seems to make no, it'd be a bit of a no-brainer to, to go and do it and take every opportunity. And, you know, I work to earn money to go and enjoy the things I love, as we all do. For me, that's cars. So this is basically why the collection's forming. Different brands. I'll learn what I like. I'll keep the cars I love. You know, I didn't think necessarily I might have kept the Jeep 4 quite so long. Equally, I thought I would keep the 675 LT a bit longer, but it didn't seem to make sense to have an LT Coupe and an LT Spider. Basically the same car. Why not have the Spider have the benefit of the roof going down and be able to put the resources towards some other things as well. Um, so hopefully that's question more or less asked. I've now got to 25 miles on my car, which is, uh, still feels pretty new, still smells new. Um, and there's going to be some good stuff with this car up and coming. I'm actually going to try and do uh, a tour around Scotland with it eventually. Um, and of course, uh, driving into Germany in the next couple of weeks. So I think next up, what I'm going to give you is a bit more of a garage update. Go around all the cars, talk a bit about them, talk a bit about what I've got planned with everything um, in the near future. The Focus RS, well, driving like this, what's there to complain about? I haven't even put it on cruise control yet. Probably shouldn't when it's brand new, but just to test how it works. On. Done easy. Aircon's blowing strong because it's very, very hot today, but so far, in fact, yeah, very cold. Um, <laughs> everything so far, smooth sailing as I make my way back down south in my new car, the new Schmiebermobile, the Ford Focus RS. Thanks very much for watching though, guys. Like I said, I'll catch up with you again with the garage update, but I hope that answers the questions of the why not a hypercar um, and why am I going down the supercar collection route, at least in the short term turn that off um, so that I don't ruin the engine revs um, but yeah that's it for now I will catch up with you again very soon cheers